So, hello everybody and um, welcome to this evening's, morning's, uh, midday's talent track, wherever you are across the world. My name is Aka Rudolf. I'm the director of the UX Design Awards and head of strategy at International Design Central Berlin, in short IDZ, the awards organizers. A short note about the awards, actually. If you're working on great UX projects, then this is your moment. Make it count. You can submit them still for the next awards until the 2nd of December. So go ahead and check our website on uxdesignawards.com for more. Now back to our event series. We regularly invite award-winning designers and teams to present their work and share knowledge with our UX community. You can join us regularly for deep dives with professionals and companies and talent tracks for up and coming designers. And to stay up to date, just connect with us on LinkedIn or social media or subscribe to our newsletter. And you'll find all our recordings on our website under events and of course also on YouTube. Today, we are planning or we were planning to present two award-winning solutions from the new talent category of the 2023 autumn award season but until now um so Xie, one of our award winners has not joined the call yet so we'll be seeing if he comes in uh in the course of the event to all of you who are watching us now live on LinkedIn, you can add questions to the LinkedIn chat and we'll bring them in to the call and to the short Q&A after the presentation. Wonderful, Zoshi, it's great that you joined us. Um, so we're complete. And uh, so to everybody out there, let me introduce uh, today's speakers. First, we'll have a presentation of Zoshi Ye from the Art Center College of Design in the US and you're on the West Coast. That's why uh, we understand you just joined at the last minute, but it's just on time. So you won the New Talent Award 23 for your project ADAPT. And right after Zushi, we'll have Caroline Schmoll and uh, Timea Kosa Timar from New Design University in Austria. And they will present their project, Miles and More, the winner of the New Talent Gold Award 2023. So it's wonderful to have you all here with us. We're looking forward to hear and see more about your award-winning work. So we'll start off with ADAPT. Dear Zoshi, you tackled a very specific challenge with your work. The jury recognized how you've tailored the user experience to people with very different levels of abilities and who are trying to navigate very different workflows uh, as a consequence. So we are looking forward to know more. And uh, how about if you bring us up to speed about your project? And so the screen is yours. You can start presenting now. Welcome. Yeah. To you. Thank you. Uh, we'll start from here. You see my screen? Yes. Yes, wonderful. All right. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Zoshi. Uh, you can also call me Olio. I'm going to introduce ADAPT, a device that aims to enable people with cerebral palsy to live a life without limitations. And they said to help them take back a total control of their computer and build their identity from it. I want to start with some simple social backgrounds. Cerebral palsy as the most common disability, there are four per 1,000 children were diagnosed with this disease. And there are 764,000 of children adults the currently suffering cerebral palsy just in the United States. And this disease will cause patients to lose their fine motor movement and their hand will be fixed to all kinds of unique gestures just like the picture showing on the right hand side. And because of all this uniqueness, they are living in a world that, not, that are not designed for them. Using simple things like a doorknob will be a very hard task for them. It's not their fault to be different, but I think it's our designers' responsibility to design and create objects that are taking minorities into considerations. As a designer and problem solver, I truly want to make some impact in their life. 
So starting with the target user, Steven Robinson. The video footage in the previous slide is Steve trying to draw in Photoshop using a mouse. As a third posted artist, he liked using Photoshop to create beautiful paintings. And the picture on the right-hand side shows one of his awarded painting that's his brother playing guitar for him. From our perspective, painting may seem effortless. But for Steve, with all the difficulties and the barrier in the workflow, he have to draw with the help of others. Simple painting like this take him weeks to finish. <clears throat> and in the interview, he told me, I hope one day I can paint on my own. This story deeply touched me. And after talking to Steve and observe him using the computer, one of the key insights told me that the self-proposed artists have difficulty using computer independently because the interaction mismatching exists between them with both hardware and software. And being able to use the system independently is extremely important for them that, that they feel dignified. Then looking to some existing solutions, I found there's no such computer accessible tool can help self-proposed user to easily navigate through various options and still have free and precise control over their computers. So what ADAPT don't want to achieve is very simple. Eliminate the mismatch interactions and same time, the solution should also adapt to each other's difference and foster independence in the digital realms. If there's no perfect solutions on the market yet, how can ADAPT make a difference? As we saw through these videos, because of the existence of interaction mismatching, supposed users are facing huge challenge when trying to use our move mouse. Now clicking on buttons, clicking buttons on the screen is even more mission impossible for them. So that is here to help by implementing a suitable, a suitable way of interacting for self-proposed user. The basic concept here is a focus indicator. And this little blue box can replace computer cursor and make navigation easy. A focus indicator to work anywhere on your computer, adapt software will real-time detect all the interactive elements on screen and no need for other developer to optimize, which also successfully set up a safe zone for user with self-posted to freely explore and they can then move a focus indicator among all pre-detected elements. Of course, only focus indicator cannot solve user problem entirely. It's, there are still barriers on the physical levels. So how may we find a solution that has minimal or zero economic requirement, user's hand and arm? And with many rounds of iterations and try all kinds of shapes and that could merge the gap. And I found the flat surface have the minimal economic requirements to the users. This is because every service user can find the pinpoint on their hand to touch and operate on touchpad. And with these two concepts working together, ADAPT has the ability to translate and map users' goals hand movement into precise screen operations. And with the basic concept working and running, what the tab wants to achieve is just beginning. Just like you and me, people with their policy also need social work and entertain. The focus indicator does help them merge the mismatched human interactions, but for those complex scenarios, what it can do is really limited, which lead to, may lead to inefficiency. So to bring the experience to the next level, I create adapt mode and adapt tool. Let's start with adapt mode. Using focus indicator to navigate is the most basic mode of interaction. But to tackle complex daily activities, the that mode needs to group based on that. And it's designed for software with large set of functionality or complex operations. Think about Photoshop. It has thousands of functions, but for painting, you only need few. And also think about browsing Instagram or LinkedIn. It's inefficient to like and share someone's post by using focus indicator. So what mode does is based on those scenario to provide small set of function for user or simplify their flow. Like the example here, all the common drawing tool has been displayed on hardware so user can directly pick and choose from there. And the adapt tool is designed for shortcut operations. 
think about using Zoom. We need constantly mute and unmute ourselves or turn camera on and off. What Zoom does is give users the ability to customize their toolbox based on scenarios, and they can put all frequently used functions into it so they can access by single click. And now let's get into both the user's perspective to see how those design benefit their life. Sitting in front of computer, Jacob as a Jose artist is ready for today's work. But before he start, he wants some music. And he opens up Spotify with a dev device and play good vibe playlist. But he soon realized the volume is too low. So he dragged the focus indicator all the way down to the volume control. And the moment he click on the volume control, the same component will be mirrored to the physical device for him to And with music playing as a third proposal artist, it's time to express creativity. And the tools the uh, Jacob used is Photoshop, creating a new file in the Photoshop and the system immediately remind him there is drawing mode available for the software. And he used mode shifting D to change to drawing mode. And on the toolbar of the top, he have access to all the uh, brush tools and he choose brush from there and moving the cursor next to the canvas. And one click, the brush touched onto the canvas. So he can begin to express his creativity. And if he doesn't satisfied with his, like the stroke here, if he doesn't satisfied with it, single click on the wrong button will help him to undo. It also comes with canvas, control mode. Using the device, you can pan and zoom the canvas very easily. After working for an hour, he decided to take a break and use the time to check his friend's Instagram posts. And open up the browser, a type device also remind him there is Instagram mode available in the App Store. So getting into a App Store, he choose to install the mode very quickly. And once the mode being installed, it's immediately available for Instagram scenarios. And what this mode provides is providing a very simple way for, uh, for Jacob to browse through the Instagram post, flipping through image, and even like a post or commenting on someone else's post. And I believe through all those three case study for working in social and entertainment scenario, you are just see the infinite possibility for that device. There are many, many more modes and tools like this series scenario just shown, and user will be able to download them for a depth store according to the scenario they need. And get back to Jacob. After a short break, Jacob continues to paint him, and he suddenly wants to try the Photoshop gradient tool, but he has no idea how to use it. And then he decides to ask his sister, Luna, for help, who is also his caregiver. Need help? Let's connect. Instead of letting a deaf user yelling for their caretaker, the deaf design connected help, especially for this kind of situation. No matter where the caretaker is, at home or on the way to work or shopping, so a poster user just need to long press the wrong button to reach out to the caretaker. And now let's get back to Jacob's home. Jacob long pressed the wrong button, which activated the connected help screen.
and this immediately do the video call connection between Jacob and his sister Luna. Luna quickly taught teach Steve how to use gradient two, so Jacob can keep his creativity flow, and Luna can get back to work with confidence. With that, the app not only helps their post user to be independent, but also allow their caretaker to focus on their own business with completely peace of mind. And that's it. That enable people with their policy to live a life without limitation. I hope you enjoy the presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sushi. Uh, thanks for your great presentation and uh, um, about you know, letting us know um, what you worked on. Uh, and so everybody who is out there on LinkedIn, and if you have questions to Zoshi, bring them to the chat, uh, post them to the chat, we'll bring them in uh, and ask him. So it's your chance to ask Zoshi directly. Um, Zoshi, um, I have actually a question. It's a very studied project and, and pretty extensive, not only in the user research, I guess, but uh, very much so also in the implementation. So how long did you work on this, on that? Uh, this spans me like two semesters, which means uh, six months. And in between those two semesters, semesters I also showed projects to the friends and talk about it and think about it. So I would say around seven, seven months or eight months, yeah, in total. That doesn't sound like much because um, I think uh, I'm very impressed about, uh, yeah. you know, the design, um, you know, the stage of design that you that you achieved uh, on the physical level of the tablet, uh, of the device, but also on, a, on the connectivity, uh, it enables with uh, standard, you know, uh, solutions and apps. So ca can you tell us a little bit more how this works? How does the tablet, how does Adapt actually sync with uh, software or with apps that people use? Because there's, there's, um, you actually bring in functionalities mm -hmm. from apps yeah. to the tablet and they change uh, along mm -hmm. with, with the software that is being used. Yeah. Uh, as that part is uh, first, the, the tablet is uh, wirelessly connected or wirelessly connected to uh, whatever device you are using, and the software will be distributed there. And for all those more than tools, uh, I just show tools is more for um, the user with their caretaker. They can define the tools based on their preferences, and basically building shortcuts to the tablet directly. And uh, also for the modes, a dev store will provide uh, to that part because it's not the commercial product yet. So that part, uh, I think about it is majorly uh, a dev will provide some modes for, uh, for the most frequently used softwares, but also allow uh, other people to upload their own modes and maybe selling on the <laughs> Uh, platform will be also another possibility. And the way they detect which software is basically uh, with a type of software running on the computer, it will be able to recognize which software is currently um, is currently running. And that way it can remind the user, oh, I see there's new modes for this, per uh, for this software. Do you want to try it out? Yeah, it's basically it works like that. So this is still a work in progress, right? Do yeah. I understand well? Yeah. Okay. Is 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 does it work for APIs or what? What's the technology involved of connecting the apps with Adapt? Mm, it doesn't require any APIs from uh, other uh, like developers because uh, there is a difficulty for today's like uh, accessibility features. If you turn on Apple or Windows accessibility features, you will find out if developers doesn't uh, give the, that information to the system, you won't able to use focus indicator navigate this through like a normal interface because focus indicator don't know where to go. So the solution come out is uh, I talked to the, I talk I talk about this with one of 
uh, computer science friends, and he helped me to uh, did a very quick mock-up. Uh, and we use like uh, AI algorithm to detect UI elements on screen. And so that way there's no like optimization from other uh, party needed. We just use AI to real time detect or what's happening on screen, which part is clickable and map those into the uh, focus indicator. Like you can move those in there among those pretty detected elements. Fascinating. So it's 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 a motion detector. Is that is that the core of Adapt um, that it actually helps people to to hover in the vicinity of of menu elements uh, and then mm -hmm. actually enables them to to click on them or enlarges them? Oh, uh, the part I just talked about is uh, how focus indicator moving on the computer screen, and for the tablet, how did it detect your uh, movement is on the middle of that screen. Uh, when your hand touch on it, on the middle section, you it once you move, it will det uh, it will calculate like how far you move, and like uh, we will set a threshold. Like for example, you move one centimeter or like one inch, we will move focus indicator like one unit to certain directions. And that threshold can be set by users, especially the uh, how sensitive it is. And it depends on the muscle control of the users. They can set different sensitivity. Uh, but by detect how far they move and divide by the threshold, it can uh, control, user can control the focus indicator with their gesture. Right. Final question before we uh, jump to the next presentation. Yeah. Uh, did you test ADAPT with actual users uh, who are handicapped? And what was the feedback? What was the, the thing that helped them most? Uh, I, I tried, the, uh, I tested the final product with, I do test the final product with the uh, uh, real users. And their first reaction is uh, one kind by this, <laughs> um, which is really uh, happy. Uh, result and the most I think still the most fascinating part is they would be able to use the gesture to move around and the mode part does still take some explanations right now and so the most useful part is still gesture navigation great wonderful thank you so much Zoshi great work thank please you. stay in, in the call for yeah. more uh, in the end um, so everybody out there who um, if you come up with additional questions to uh, Zoshi please bring them in because he will stay in uh, the event now to our second presentation uh, featuring the project miles and more the jury decided on a gold award uh, last year on this beautifully simple concept that turns frustration into a clear proposition by way of a very easy very easy uh, use um, of the product so dear caroline and Tamia, welcome to um, this talent track the screen is yours show us more about your work thank you so hopefully you can see my screen okay Hi, everyone. Welcome to our project. My name is Timia. And my name is Caroline. We studied graphic and information design at um, the New Design University in Austria, where our project uh, Minutes and More developed. So let's start the journey. So um, some of us are familiar with the problem, especially those who travel a lot by train. Uh, the trains are often late and you probably have to wait a lot. That is why there is a great frustration on the part of the passengers. On these grounds, we designed um, the app Minutes and More. So the first question that popped into our heads as UX designers um, was how to reduce the level of frustration or even exchange um, negative or positive feelings. Therefore, we focused on the following topics. So um, it was important to us to create an easy and playful design. What kind of functions does the app need to fill the needs of users? 
we also thought about UX writing a lot. Like, yes, something annoying happened right now, but um, focus on the positive happening also at the same time. And um, the goal was to keep the app user friendly. So an easy use results a happy user, I have to say. And finally, um, what extra benefits could we work in so that the appearance of the app looks the way we would expect it? Thank you, Timmy. Okay, now I'll take over and explain you more about the app. Uh, the app Minutes and More is for people who want to book their journeys online and profit from their delays. In contrast to a con conventional train app, our app converts delays, delayed minutes into points that can be redeemed in multiple occasions. So how does it work? How do I change the delayed minutes into points? To explain it a bit more easier, I will walk you through the journey in Benjamin's point of view, a user. So Benjamin is opening the app and immediately he sees he's already got 75 minutes points collected from his previous journeys. So now he is at the train station and he's waiting for his train. He gets a message that his train is 12 minutes late, so therefore he gets 12 points to his wallet and he would like to redeem those points on his next journey. Now he's trying to book his next journey from Vienna to Salzburg. He's putting the departure and the arrival and exactly it's showing him the journeys and he's clicking on one. So now he clicked on a journey. On top he sees 87 points that he has in total right now. The total of the journey, can you go back? Sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so, yes. Uh, the total of the journey uh, is 84 points. He's also chosen the first class, which adds 10 points more. Okay, now. So when the journey is successfully booked, the app is telling him he still um, has three points left. There's the option to show the ticket if back <laughs> There's the option to show the ticket, and when you click on it, it shows the QR code, um, which you need to to scan when you're on the train. Okay, and furthermore, there's more options to redeem the points inside the trains inside the train, like um, purchasing snacks, like tea or coffee. So, um. Next to changing negative feelings into positive feelings, I would like to speak a bit more about some other benefits of the app. For example, there the target group is really big. Like basically everybody can use the app. The app, the app is helpful to everybody that is booking journeys online uh, and using a smartphone. Then there are many offers of redeeming the points. You can, as I already said, book uh, tickets with the points or buy snacks on the train. Or also, there's also the option to send the points to friends and share your minutes. And last but not least, um, it's fun collecting the points. So the negative feeling of uh, trains arriving late goes away there's actually like the the feeling of you want to use the app and you you want to collect points okay well the project is done now and we still pretty like it but our process wasn't quite easy at all times now to the struggles for us as a ux designer first of all us as uh, ux designers we are creating things for people people of different needs and expectations. So we had to figure out a persona and afterwards it was much easier to make decisions. One of the turning points was the amount of functions. What would a user need? At the end, um, he, we wanted to avoid a duplication of, a, of existing train apps in Austria so um, and do something more useful in regards of user experience. Um, we decided early in the process that uh, we would like to 
to design um, to be more cheerful in contrast to the formal apps we know in Austria. Um, from that point on, it was more fun to create interfaces, but above all, this decision gave us a direction to go to. And of course, time. So um, we had a lot of ideas, but we had to prioritize in relation to our time till the deadline. So um, we have now reached the end of our presentation. We would like to thank you for the opportunity to take part and welcome your opinions. Um, feel free to ask some questions. Thanks a lot for your attention. Thank you. Thank you uh, to both of you. And actually, there is a question from uh, the audience. Manat uh, Hayas Meili, a uh, product designer, asks, how can the user scan that QR code? Assuming that, well, uh, I, I, would, I would take the uh, question as assuming that uh, the user has the QR code in their, on their phone, so they won't be able to make a photo of it themselves. Yes. Yes, yes the, it's in the wallet. The the QR code is for when you get checked in the train for the tickets. You yes, you have it in your app. You click on the button show ticket, and then the person who is controlling in the train can scan. Right. So that's not co um, connected to the um, to collecting the points, but actually more like a, a control function for the train operators. Um, there is actually another question. Um, surprising, so many that coming in. Um, from Anand, uh, how can we buy cookies out of these points? So that's basically related to the, I think, the after sales business model, et cetera, et cetera. Did you um, think about this? Um, our project, it's not a real project, it's a hypothetical project. So, in theory, and Yes, in theory, it would work like um, the people in trains having like devices that you can like scan like uh, like a credit card and you scan and it takes points off or you there is an app system that takes points of your app and they hand you the coffee. But that's basically up to a bit an imaginary part because our project is not um, a real life project. Right, you get it there. Uh, actually, can you turn off your presentation and we can see you uh, on, a, on yes. a larger scale then, then it's much better. Thank you for speaking. Um, so I'm wondering, uh, actually, um, of course, this is a hypothetical project and uh, it was also a very short project you told us uh, before we started um, the event. Um, I'm wondering what was your biggest struggle in it? What was the biggest uh, difficulty and maybe um, how did you overcome it? Well, I think um, that the group work was a little bit uh, difficult because we are creative people, right? And everybody of us had a lot of ideas and uh, um, yeah, we had to prioritize. And uh, with time, it, it was easier to, to make some decisions. But I think all of us, we, we know the problem. <laughs> And we are a lot of people in a group and uh, very creative. So that was not a problem, but it was difficult at some time, at some point. And uh, yeah, I think that was the, the most difficult thing. So what was your solution? Yeah, we had a list. We had a list full of ideas and uh, and we, we try to be realistic in the time that we had till the, the deadline. So we just realized some of the ideas that was just like realistic. So you approach from a factual point of view and try to filter the different ideas into getting it done. Very good. And there is uh, additional questions. And uh, I find this one actually interesting because it's a little bit about questioning, you know, um, the assumption that you made um, that collecting more and more and more and points would be a very positive experience. And uh, Elisaveta, who's a UX designer, wrote, um, she was wondering, could be there a danger of summing up all the minutes waiting might trigger frustration instead of uh, happiness? 
could there be too much waiting time uh, or maybe the inability to get the to redeem the coupons uh, is there is there anything that you thought about during the project where it might actually backfire hmm. um, would you like me to answer to me <laughs> Um, actually, to be honest, we did not see it backfire. I also don't think that it actually would. I mean, maybe there could be, uh, for some people, negative effects, but in general, I think and we think that it's a positive thing because, I mean, when I... I Especially in Austria, I don't know where, how it is in other countries, but especially in Austria, there's a big thing of like trains are known to be late. So everybody is frustrated. Ah, oh, it's late again, late again. So everybody's actually already waiting for it to be late and to be frustrated and to tell everybody else I'm frustrated because the train is late. So we thought actually that to take this negative energy away and give points would have a very positive impact i we never thought about a negative one so this is my honest answer <laughs> yeah it would it would uh we would need to see when we test it in real life and actually uh, to all of you now in the call if you have questions to your colleagues uh please take the opportunity to raise your hand and and go ahead i don't know uh um so she, if you have any uh, any thoughts about about minutes and more, and um, maybe from your perspective um, from across the ocean, how it would work uh, where you are, go ahead. Um, actually, I didn't experience too much like uh, like train public transportation delays. I'm usually <laughs> taking bikes every day. So, uh, but I do have a question. Uh, what made you think about or decide using this almost like uh, gamified or like giving coupons to people? Uh, because I think there might be oh, a lot of other ways to create positive experience while people are waiting. And what what is this decision factors made you choose on this direction? I think it was our first impression to um, do a positive impact. And also um, we thought about that it will be easier for us because it was the first impression to, um, to work on a, an app design and include that also. So maybe because it was our first impression and uh, that we had the idea that we, we, we could design it the way we would like it to, to look alike. So I think that's the, the answer. Did you have any ideas about uh, different ways of, of giving back when, when you're waiting frustrated to your, uh, for your train and, and, maybe missing your connection uh, um, train. So she, did you, did anything come to your mind? Because you said there would, there could be many other ways of, of uh, redeeming um, this frustrative moment. Mm, uh, that's interesting. I, I think one of, one of the thing I think immediately is uh, I sometimes use Uber or Lyft and I found uh, Uber is actually quite honest on um, how many minutes you need to wait uh, and lift somehow make me feel like they said the car will be here two minutes but sometimes uh, it's three or four minutes but at the beginning the expectation is two minutes and while you are waiting you actually don't really know how long it it, it gonna take and how long is two minutes you lose a sense of the time and but I do feel like lift makes me, I like lift more. I don't know the reason. Probably it's every time I check the app, it's faster. It's always faster than 
Uber. <laughs> um, maybe I'm thinking uh, if a train gonna arrive, there are probably an estimation wait time on the station. And what if we can uh, not providing numbers, more like uh, abstract way, some symbols or uh, graphic animations to give people a sense of when will the train be here. And if train is very close in two minutes, then you show the time. Something like that is the quick idea. I, I definitely haven't given a second thought yet. Yeah, it's an interesting point. What do you think, Karin and Tamia? Uh, I mean, this is about uh, managing expectations, about giving the customer the feeling that the company is caring about them, um, that you aren't left hanging, uh, not knowing what happens, because this is where frustration uh, comes in. I think the Dutch uh, railways had some projects about this, about waiting time in stations and about how to manage this, about and a lot was, uh, as, as you said, uh, Zoshi, about um, uh, informing people how long they will have to wait, where to stay at the platform, so as not to be frustrated to running after, you know, doors that are not there and so on and so on. And actually, I think that's, that's some nice ideas. You could even think this a little bit further into entertainment and screen, you know, short films with, a, with the exact length of, of the train that needs to take time to approach. Um, maybe in Germany, where I live now, uh, where we are based, we would have full uh, a full feature films at the train stations <laughs> um, because trains can be very late here. So, um, but, uh, also, pardon? <laughs> but also, I think uh, having collecting points is also a really good way and kind of motivate people a lot. And I'm asking the question just because I'm curious. Not because I think that's not the uh, interesting solution. There is actually another uh, question from the audience, which relates more um, to actually the UI design and miles and more. Um, so how did you decide on actually the UI and the colors and the animations? Uh, how did you design that it would be suitable for your target group? Well, we wanted a, a balanced um, style, like in between of dark and light. And we also um, decided for a stronger signal color, that's um, orange in that case, um, that also um, shows up in error messages or um, to, to um, yeah, for, for uh, important information. And in, in general, like we looked at our train apps that we have on the phone, they're very um, grayish or in case of the Austrian train um, red. So we wanted to have a very big contrast to the other apps because they tend to get lost in like we have, I think, five different apps for just one train organization. So we really wanted to um, differentiate our app from the others um yes so we chose that's why we chose this very strong violet and also we designed the, the train character which gives like this positive gamification vibe feeling of gives like this feeling of i'm playing a game this was the the idea behind the character and, and the color yeah so we um created the, the avatar the topic related avatar just um to to go along with with the user and show and, he, and the avatar shows up at all kinds of um status so when when the ticket is booked or if there is an error um he's on the on the screen so right so the focus was on playfulness on on a gamified um even like a, a, a um a mobile game I think uh, approach. So I, I have some some final questions to you, uh, and please, um, and anybody out there, bring them in. That's that's your moment uh, where you can you can interact with our guests. Um, uh, but back to you, Zoshi. Um, so you developed a very studied prototype, uh, almost an MVP. Um, are there any future plans on 
on adapt on maybe even bring into market anything you can share uh, that part i i do want some maybe one day i can bring into market but right now i probably don't know how to do it yet <laughs> and i will uh, but this is definitely on my uh, on my list I will, I will see how can I get there. So any investors watching now, please reach out to Zoshi. Um, what would be your biggest challenge in bringing uh, Adapt to market? Would you, do you have any idea? Is there any, any twist that would be really hard to overcome? What do you think? Mm, I feel like because when this project start, uh, the understanding of Cyber policy as a market is not. I haven't done a lot of research on that side, and I don't know. Uh, I I see a lot of people suffering, but I don't know how. Um, uh, for example, I don't know the willingness to pay, and I don't know what is the price point they can uh take, and uh, price is also a very important factor on whether this product is accessible. Uh, so in the early on, I actually think about like maybe uh, there will be some kind of uh, crowdfunding and people can donate and this product to the people that need them. Uh, but I think lack of understanding of this as a market, uh, that's a part I'm not sure how can I bring this to the market yet. So maybe when I have more knowledge on that, uh, I will make this come true yeah because on the technical side it's not uh very hard to make i think yeah yes we wish you the best of luck and and probably uh also shouting out right here to uh some foundations working in the field uh because i think that could be also an approach um uh, we very much hope that also winning the UX Design Award will help you uh, in your future work. Uh, did it make any change um, when you won, Soshi? Uh, did it? What was your experience then uh, for your project? First, it's really happy to get the award, and also uh, I uh, I do feel like a lot of people are connecting <laughs> through me, uh, linking and. Uh, having some coffee chat with other people and actually I'd be very happy to share my like my experience and uh, also uh, I actually got some um, like work opportunities but it's more on industrial design side and I'm, I'm also uh, working in a consultancy right now so uh, it definitely benefit both like uh, connection aspect and also the work opportunity part. Yeah, thank you so much for this award. Well, you earned it. It's a it's a beautiful project, and we're so happy that this um, that this distinction that comes, of course, from an expert jury um, did help you. And um, all the best for your next steps. Um, Great to hear. Kalorine and Taimia, um, can you share something with us? What was your biggest learning from this project when you think about your next steps as designers? Well, I think um, it helped me in that point that um, in, the, in the projects in the, in the future, I will take some more time for myself just to connect with the project and just to, to find the, the soul of it and uh, just to make more um, decisions. But it, it just takes more time. So just don't don't hurry with things because it's very, very important at the beginning of a process. Yes, for me to like, I tend to kind of jump over the research process and like start to design because this is kind of my favorite part to go to the actual design but I learned from this project that it's really important to go back or start from the beginning and do a very thorough research and really get to know what you're doing it for and why you're doing it and then then you can enjoy the design part this is what I'm taking from it 
Absolutely true. I mean, you, 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 you have to discover who you design for and why, and, and only then start with, with, uh, you know, developing solutions. What uh, did the gold award bring to you? What was to you and of course your colleague, because you were a team of three, what did it mean to you? Did it help you at all? Well, we didn't um, study UX design as a main course at university or something. So that's because, so that's, uh, that is why we um, have a, a special value to it. Um, but I think it's, it impacts the, the career also. So we will see. <laughs> yeah, first of all, we're really happy to have won it. And definitely got me also um, LinkedIn contacts and been in contact with people. And yes, I'm, I'm sure it will help me for my future and yeah. I speechless. <laughs> <laughs> it's great to hear. Uh, it's great to see you uh, um, smile and, and enjoy this moment. And, and it's great that you took the time also to present your work to, with our UX community, which is global. So this is also an opportunity that we, we really want. And, and it's, it's a great moment and great fun to be able to um, to offer such a platform to winners and participants of the awards. So all the best from uh, us here, from the team at International Design Center Berlin as well. And um, we're looking forward to where this will bring you in the next couple of years. It's been great. It's been a pleasure to host you here. And uh, well, what's next um, for everybody out there? Actually, of course, the submission deadline for the next awards ends on December 2nd. So you still get a couple of days if you want to submit and uh, actually join us again on December 13th. We will have a deep dive there with a very special project. It's DIA. It's an e-government super app uh, that enables actually millions of Ukrainian citizens to access 25 government services directly from the mobile phones. So it's a huge project and you can register for that talk on our website and LinkedIn, of course. So for more, stay tuned, follow us for updates uh, on LinkedIn, Instagram, or our newsletter. It's been a pleasure to host all of you. Sashi, uh, Timia, Caroline, and hope to see you soon again. Everybody out there, stay well wherever you are. Enjoy the day and the rest of the week. Bye-bye.